Hi y'all, uh, Lexi here. Ready for another review? Always done in one shot because you know that's how I am. Always do reviews one shot live because what's the point in editing? But anyway, we're looking at the Kappa. You know, that SMG. The weird one. The Tengu. Like, look alike. It looks the same, unless you have the shiny Raxium one, of course, but it looks the same as the Tengu, but it's a lot different. Honestly, it is extremely, extremely different to the Tengu. And it's just better. I could end the review right now, honestly, and just say it's just better. But I'll explain why. And of course, give you some live gameplay of it, because, you know, cherry-picking footage to show you the best moments of the gun isn't a very good representation of how the gun will actually perform in live play. So it's a 750 at 50 SMG, but it has three pellets, so really it's a 750 at 150 SMG. Which puts it in the same area DPS-wise as stuff like the Punisher, the Air Donnie, kind of that kind of range of submachine gun. Not a high DPS, like the first generation Cyclone Armistice, but it's also not like PDW, MKV, or Hailstorm level either. Like It, it sits pretty comfortably in the middle. It's pretty average time to kill wise. It's got meh. Hey, somebody just pulled their bastion. It's got meh muzzle velocity. I mean, 380 meters a second. Who cares? It's a submachine gun. The amount of times velocity will come into play on a submachine gun most times is, you know, not high. Real speed is good. Ammunition's 25 bullets in a mag, which gives you pretty decent damage magazine. Pellet choke of 2.5 is meh. I mean, it's slightly better than the Tengu, so that's got to be worth something. <laughs> Cone of Fire stats are basically the same as all of submachine guns, as you would expect, because submachine guns in this game share the exact same Cone of Fire stats, apart from Tengu and Kappa, which have the same Cone of Fire stats themselves, so that's not any different from what you're used to. Attachment-wise, a very small scope setup. I personally run the CCLR, I wouldn't run a 2x on it, but take your pick. Barrel, I would definitely would not suppress it, but it's up to you. I just really wouldn't recommend suppressing it. It's just, I mean, you can if you want to play a stealthy infiltrator, but I don't think so. Flash suppressor, though, free benefit, whatever. Rail, you can honestly go either way, extended mag or hybrid. Extended mag gives you four extra bullets, which can be life-saving, but it hits your equip speed now, which is... If you're concerned about equip speed, go hybrid laser, otherwise extended mag is fine. Both are completely viable, and... I'll tell you why the laser is viable on the Kappa, but not the Tengu in a moment. For ammo, SPA. You pick SPA on basically any gun it's available on. Although, some interesting thing to note is that the Kappa, compared to the Tengu, has an extra 2 meters of max damage range. It doesn't sound like a lot, but factor SPA in there on top. And you're looking at 13 versus 11 meters, which again isn't a lot, but it, it is helpful. The other thing of note is that you actually have a higher minimum damage too. It doesn't matter because if you're using a cap at range, what the hell are you doing? But it's still something nice. You get more reserve ammo, a slightly bigger magazine, you get a better choke, and because it's a lower damage bullet weapon, you're also getting better bloom. But that's totally in line with everything else in the game. Generally, if it's a higher damaging weapon, you have higher bloom to compensate for a lower rate of fire, just so the weapons stay balanced. But the important thing to note with the Kappa is that... Oh, Fort Drexler, that'll do. The important thing to note with the Kappa is, unlike the Tengu, it's reliant. Or it's not reliant, but it's reliable. The big problem with the Tengu, and in my opinion, what single-handedly kills the Tengu like, single-handedly kills the Tengu dead in the water, is the fact that the Tengu is about as consistent as a dried-up turtle. Which is to say, not so. Kappa, on the other hand, is nowhere near regular SMG territory, but it's a hell of a lot more reliable. And, yes, they're both pellet spread SMGs, which kind of stinks for reliability in general, but the reason it's more reliable is because the rate of fire is different. You have one less pellet to rely on for your maximum damage per bullet, so having one pellet miss matters less on this gun compared to the Kappa, or the Tengu. Again, live take. And the higher rate of fire means missing is less punishing as well. 
so the gun is a lot more forgiving of when the gun itself inevitably screws up and misses a pellet. Because, you know, it will. It's a pellet spread SMG. It's going to inevitably fail you. Your accuracy is not going to work 100% of the time. But because the individual pellets do not matter as much on the Kappa as they do on the Tengu, that's why, in my opinion, the laser's viable on this gun compared to the Tengu, because hip-firing it is simply not as punishing. When your individual pellet matters less for your total DPS compared to the Tengu, where if you don't land that pellet, you're suddenly a 500 at 150 weapon and you're complete junk, it's just a lot more reliable. And yeah, it will fail you, like any gun in the game, it will eventually fail you, but it's going to do so a lot less. Also, we just got that fight completely destroyed. But what can you do? Bastions. And the other thing I want to touch on before I do some just regular gameplay is your loadout. Pistol, your choice. It's totally your choice. Use whatever you want. I'm playing NSO. I'm currently using the recall because I'm working on my sidearm directive. If you're going to look at meta pistols, underboss, pilot, commissioner will all work just fine. Because it's an SMG, you may want to consider something that works at range, like the Black Hand, or the Rebel, or the Cerberus, or the Recall, whatever. Tool is up to you. I mean, there are a lot of tools on Araxis, but if you have to pick between the Recon and the Motion Spotter, I'd go with the Darts. The Kappa lends itself to an aggressive playstyle, and that's why I'd pick the Darts, personally. Cloak. Obviously, you can't use Stalker. As much as I wish you could, you cannot. So whether you go Nano Armor, Hunter's up to you. I would personally suggest Nano Armor, but it's up to you. Sloot. As long as it's ASC or Nano Eve, you're fine. If you run Grenade Bando EMP, that's totally viable too. I personally like ASC, so it's the Nano Eve move speed nerf. But that's just me. Both are totally viable. Grenade is up to you. I like the frags. <laughs> It's really up to you. Tool, medkits, shitter sticks, they always work. Fuse and infantry mines work well. It's really up to you. Knife. It's a knife, you're probably not going to use it. Implants, take whatever you prefer. Assimilate is good. Even arguably more so than normal because since it's pellets, you might get a random pellet bounce up into the skull on a kill and give you a free 200 shield headshot. So assimilate's really not that bad on either of the pellet based weapons. For your second slot, take whatever you want, athlete, cat-like, whatever. I personally like cat-like for crouch hip fire strafing. It's nice. Your tactical has never mattered and it never will. So that's basically the shorthand of your loadout. Of course, you can tweak it to whatever you like. That's just the way things are in Planicide. You know, you're never going to have a one-size-fits-all. You're going to mess up. You're going to learn the weapon. You're going to tool your loadout to what you like. That's just the way the game is, right? You're never truly going to get a perfect loadout that works for you just by watching some random YouTubers one review on the gun. And hell, I'm probably one of the very few loadout or reviews for the Kappa out there. So it's not like you have much inspiration to draw from either. Also, yeah, your pistol. If you're at that range, you should be using your little submachine gun instead. So I'm sure the real big question here is, is the Kappa worth 4,000 of your hard-earned A7 compared to... compared to, say, the Kua? Because the Kua is arguably the other strongest contender if we exclude the stuff for A7 that's been around forever. Of the new NSX batch, what's worth your A7 the most? And naturally, it will depend on what you like using. I'm not going to tell you to get the Kappa if you hate submachine guns. It's a total waste. But if you like submachine guns or you like the, ten uh, the Tengu, whatever the other one is called, again, live reveal. If you like the Tengu, that's a teammate. I'm an NC contracted, so that doesn't really matter. If you like the Tengu or submachine guns, Kappa is not a bad pick. If you want a meta choice of the five NSX weapons, go elsewhere. But the Kappa is, in my opinion, the best of them. Kua is solid, but it does have some of its own issues, like being on the Yumi platform and as such having that dumbass burst up. Or the burst delay, I guess you'd call it. So the cap is overall probably the most effective of the five, but you can make your argument. 
As for the other three, Yaura is neat, it's like an NC Emissary, but unless you like auto pistols, it's kinda junk. Session is kinda junk. Um, the second generation battle rifles, like the Obelisk, do it much better. Because they sit in that exact same damage tier, and oh wait, they're a lot more reliable. <laughs> and as for the Miramasa, it's good at one thing, and that's hipfire strafing armor. The Decimator is better in every single other way. And the Decimator doesn't cost you 4,000 A7. So, case closed, if you have 4k A7 burning a hole in your pocket, and you don't know what to get, the Kappa is a safe pick. It's, it's a safe weapon. It's a solid weapon, unfortunately it doesn't count for anything directive-wise, so if you're looking for that, go elsewhere. On NSO specifically, the Viscount is required for the shotgun directive, so if you're playing NSO, the Viscount is a very safe buy because you literally have to get it for the shotgun directive. But if you want the Kappa, go for it. It's fun, and if you like some machine guns, you'll probably get your A7s worth out of it. Of course, I'm using the shiny version, not the pleb version, because I have it from the old NSX directives. But, you know, it's a good gun. It's a reliable gun, it works, it's always worked, it will probably stay in line with the meta, it's literally a better Tengu, it's more consistent. It's flat out... It's, it's just a decent weapon. It's not amazing, like, you're not getting a Cyclone or an Armistice. It's certainly not a top-of-the-tier submachine gun. But it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It looks good, if you have the Araxian one, huh? But it's if you got A7 burning a hole in your pocket, go for it. Uh, as for classes, it works good on info, it works decent on light assault, much better than the Tengu ever worked on light assault, but still, some machine guns and LA are kind of, yeah. And I will say, I will say, if you happen to be going after the launcher directive, as I did on my NSO character, if you happen to be going after the launch directive, the Kappa is actually an outstanding primary for this use, because it's amazing at just being pulled out quickly and spraying and hoping you hit shit. Pair it with a sidearm you like, like the pilot, and you can, that's actually probably the better way to grind the launcher directives without resorting to turret farming or resorting to other more drastic methods. And yes, I'm one of 10 players to get the Araxia Miramasa, Connery players suck my kappa. But yeah, that's basically the kappa for you. In short, it's a literally a better Tengu that is more consistent, more reliable, more damaging, except that costs you 4,000 A7. That said, there's literally no reason I would ever use the Tengu over this thing. Like, not in any universe. So... If you really have the A7 burning a hole in your pocket, pick up the Kappa, it's a straight upgrade. It just doesn't count for any directives, so if you like chasing directives, look elsewhere. <clears throat> and that's really the short of it. So, yeah. A couple things before the video ends, because I want to self-plug some shit. I've started streaming on YouTube. Um, I mostly do VTubing-related content. My PC is not great, so I can't VTube Planetside, unfortunately. Sad. But I do other games. Uh, you're free to watch if you like. I will put my Discord link and Twitter in the description if you're interested in either of those. And yeah, so... Oh, and because it's been a long-ass time since I've done the MKV review or the Life Salt review or anything, I'm a trans female now, gaming. So, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's all I want to say for real this time. And I will see you... Probably a long-ass time in video form again, but you'll catch me streaming most days a week, so yeah. See ya!